Welcome to Mailbox Monday. Monday! Where we unbox boxes. Is that it? Unbox boxes? Yeah. Unbox boxes. We get some unusual and interesting stuff sent to us at Cade Media, so in these episodes, we aim to unbox them and see what's inside. First up, something which I've been very excited for. Careful. It'll be the second time this is broken. Oh, branded box. Oh, it's got handwriting on it. That's good. A bit creepy. Regular viewers of these videos will know that I bought an L2RX hydraulic group set from AliExpress a while back, put it on my bike, flew to America, and then went to ride it, and the shifter snapped off. So I messaged them on the website, AliExpress chat thing, and then they got back and they said, we'll send you a new one straight away. Did you ever find out if they, if they knew who you were? No. Unfortunately, there is no way of knowing. However, I would like to believe they would have sorted anyone out in the same manner, which was a very quick response, but a bit of postage time because it is coming all the way from China. Oh wow, I was just expecting a new flappy bit. No, 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 they're gonna, I asked for the whole thing. No, they even put a gear cable in. I stand by it, it's a great looking group set. So, thank you L2, there's the update for you guys. They did send it and it did arrive. Next! Clearly he wasn't taught how to throw as a child, just ride a bike. The lovely guys at Tailfin have sent us the much awaited top tube bags. There is a variety of different types in here. I think we should unbox them and see what the deal is. I was riding a prototype. I was riding a prototype one of these uh, when I rode across America, and it was fantastic. My one was the full length, like the white one, which ended up not being white by the end of the trip. It's also not one of these. They haven't ended up making a huge full length one yet, like the whole length of the top. They haven't yet. Who knows what's going to come next? Who knows? Um, so these are all the shorter versions, and there's different ways they open. Special mounting system, which apparently will not leave marks on your frame because it's so secure. You can still use a, a bolt thing. On. Yeah, if your frame has bolts in the top tube. Oh, I do smell it good. It smells like oranges. Tailfin are most famous for their big rear rack, which started off as panniers on a carbon strut, which fixes on the through axle and on the seat post. And it's pretty unusual looking. It meant that your rear pack as opposed to a normal bag, which you just strap on, doesn't move around in the same way when you're riding, so it's really secure. They are now branching out into different bags, so you can have all matching stuff. And these have been a long time coming. They've spent a long time designing these and going through like 20 different versions. I, I was actually chatting to one of the guys from Tailfin the other week, and what they were saying is every single element of the new bags they have designed themselves. They haven't used any like off the shelf parts and bits and pieces. Cause I think quite a lot of bike brands or bag brands actually just kind of go off the shelf or get finishing bits, which are made by, I think Fidlock actually get used quite a lot cause they, their specialty is like attachments, yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't it? I've never even considered the option of not ha having something other than a zip, but I think that could actually work really well. It's cause you want to grab stuff fast, right? When you're riding. Or what my first thoughts is, camera. So there's the zip ones, the non-zip ones, and then three different sizes. Oh, I do like that little flash of teal on the zips. It basically closes itself. I like the idea of this, this strap mechanism, which you've used. For example, when we went bikepacking to Spain, I ended up putting electrical tape all over my bike so that it wasn't going to scratch my lovely paintwork. Mm -hmm. Whereas, so I'm told, and I guess you've experienced, with this new attachment, I don't even need to worry about there are, that. There are no on. marks. There are no marks on my top tube. I had a frame bag as well, no marks on the down tube or the uh, seat tube. And I had bags on my forks, which is not recommended, but they were fine and they didn't cause any marks either. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Tailfin have been a sponsor of mine for many years, which is why they've sent us all of these bags. I say us, I mean me. These are all mine, sorry. I'm excited about this, Jimmy is not. Why aren't I? You just said it's boring. What you is it? gonna be boring. You don't even know what it is. <laughs> it looks like it's gonna be boring. This section involves another YouTuber. There's a guy called China Cycling, Joe from China Cycling, and he has started a company, and the company is called Panda Podium. He has basically become an agency for 
the Asian market of bicycle products to distribute them into the UK and be a point of contact. So he's kind of filtered through companies that are available on websites like AliExpress and he knows a lot of these guys in person and then he serves as the person you can talk to if you want to get hold of these things if you're a bike brand or if you're an individual. Um, so yeah, it's an English speaking point of contact. So while I was chatting to him, he put me in touch with these guys who make carbon bars and stems oh, and was like, do you want to try the carbon bar and stem? And I said, yes. The branding looks like it's uh, Envy, so I'm, I've got high expectations now. It is a box inside a box. May all the beautiful to be blessed. That's, it's stealthy, very nice. It looks really good, doesn't it? Looking at the website of these guys, EXS, they're obsessed with bike fit. So talking about the reach of the bars and the comp how the compact they are, and there's a couple of different options you can get as well. So they're really thinking about the fit implications of the products they're making. So we've gone with here 110 mil stem and 38 centimeter handlebars. There's very low reach on them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's super tiny. Which is a good thing. Incompatible with zip and bond trader. They're very stiff. I can't rip them apart. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. It's a good test at least. Let's see how much they weigh. One hundred and seventy-three grams. Is that light? I don't know. And the stem weighs? That is a beautiful looking stem, isn't it? One hundred and eighteen grams. That's about how much sugar I put in my tea. So that one hundred and eighteen grams includes the attachment for the out front mount. I don't know how it fits though. Prototype. Oh, it's a prototype. That's definitely three D printed. Prototype version two point two. Oh, what happened to all the ones before it? One hundred and forty-seven grams. I don't know what that means in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, gonna be going straight on one of my bikes. I'm gonna put them on, ride them a bit, and let you know how they feel and perform. For absolute clarity, EXS have not asked us to feature any of their products in the video. We have chosen to do it. If you wanna check out Joe from China Cycling's website, I'll put a link down below to that. And the podium. Not in my face, please, in the hand. Okay. Oh God, that's on. Ideally so. <laughs> so. <laughs> This is an interesting one. These guys emailed me. I know absolutely nothing about them. I believe they're a company called Cube and they have just launched a mini bicycle tire inflator. They refer to it as an e-pump. It's an electric pump. It means you can pump up a tire without having to do any of the actions that you like doing so Oh, much. I like doing that. Non-flat tire start before connecting the nozzle. What does that mean? These are gonna be useful for people which perhaps haven't got strong hands or uh, perhaps have mobility issues or perhaps even just don't want to pump up the bike themselves and they just want to go boop and it pumps up the tire. So I think we should test to see if it actually works. I believe it's charged up. Oh my goodness. The USB-C charging port is also how it gets the air into the pump. We have two 28 mil tires. We're going to pump them up from flat. I'm going to use normal pump. Jimmy's going to use the electric pump. Let's see how long it takes. I have to say, that's going to fit in a pocket pretty well. Go. Where's the hole? Yeah. I left my... Uh, little pressure checking device at home in my garage. So we're using a track pump to very accurately check how much PSI we have in each wheel. First, the electric wheel. That's about 50 PSI. Nice. And yours, uh, 48 PSI. Oh, so we're pretty much, I mean, but I pumped as fast as I physically could. And I stopped. And you stopped halfway through. Yeah. That is so much better than I thought it was going to be. It is actually I was like, good. what has Jimmy bought from the internet? And this is, uh, I, I'm, I'm well impressed. I'm well impressed. Psych Plus, top marks. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a novelty piece, but I'm legitimately going to have this in my pocket from now on. I also get a pump as well, because I like a top tube pump but I don't have one for all my bikes. I, am, I can't believe this is actually that good. Should we just leave it on though and see if it pops? As Jimmy quite rightly pointed out, this would be a fantastic thing for someone who couldn't do this pumping motion. And I imagine there's lots of people in that situation. So for a thing that big in your pocket, fair play. That is a lot of pressure in there now. 
Apparently it will do up to 120 psi. That's what they claim. That's what it says on the instruction. But in what scenario would you not be able to pump, would you be able to change a flat but not be able to pump up a tire? So is it actually useful in that scenario? I don't know. But it is definitely something that I'm going to be using more of. Sturka SLT07 mild citrus hyper, hypertonic drink. Hypertonic. It's high in sodium, suitable for vegans and vegetarians, easy and convenient format, designed specifically for endurance sports. So these are the new electrolyte tablets from Sturka. These are apparently the highest single dose of sodium in an electrolyte tablet that is aimed at cyclists. So, um, 1,000 milligrams per tablet. So 95% of the electrolyte that you lose through sweat is sodium, which is why the majority of these would probably be, if you look at the ingredients, there's a majority of sodium. And then there's other stuff in there as well, like potassium, magnesium, calcium. Mild citrus, I don't know what that means in terms of flavor. That smells actually quite fruity. I haven't told you yet. You're gonna do a blind taste test between Sturka SLT07 and Salt water. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Why have I got to do this? It's my test. I need a subject. You're the subject. Can you actually not see? <laughs> look at, look, look. I can't look. Why are you telling me to look at stuff? I can't look. Look at all this exciting fun shit happening in the room. Oh, world. you wouldn't believe what's just happened, Francis. <laughs> Due to one of them being yellow, Francis has had to be blindfolded. Uh, it's also currently hissing. And it smells like, have you ever had those like vitamin C, like evanescence tablets? <laughs> that's just salt. 100% sure that's just salt. That's much nicer. So on a scale that of one to 10, how much, how so good is... Right <laughs> on a scale of one to 10, how good is salt water? For a, for a two. Two? Mm. Wow, that's better than I was expecting. Mm. And how about SLT 07? Lovely, I'm drinking this all day. <laughs> That is actually really nice, especially considering how much salt is in it. Thank you, Stoker, for sending these over for this episode of Mailbox Mondays. If you want to check out their website, there's a link in the description which gets you 25% off your first, per first purchase. Ooh, that salt's gone to your head, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Stoker, for being one of my personal sponsors and not sponsoring Jimmy. 